Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be looking at the VSEPR theory, which stands for the Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory, and that's going to give rise to our second objective here, which is going to be predicting molecular shapes based upon how valence shell electrons repel each other. Let's jump right into it, guys. What we have here is one of the biggest words or phrases you're going to see in chemistry. It's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. It's a really fantastically big word that has a lot of bark to it, but not too much bite. What it basically tells you is that electrons repel each other. And that's something we already know. Electrons all have negative charges, and negative charges repel each other. And when that happens, my molecules are going to have predictable shapes. And really, a lot of this hinges on, right here, the central atom. The central atom is one of the keys, one of the keys to understanding the valence shell electron peripulsion theory. And one way to abbreviate this is the VSEPR theory. And once again, electrons are going to repel each other, and when they do, we are going to have predictable molecular shapes. And as I said before, one of the things that hinges on is your central atom. And for a central atom, I'm referring to nitrogen right here. Nitrogen is my central atom. Now, around nitrogen, how many shared electron pairs do I have? How many shared pairs? Take a second, look at nitrogen, find out how many pairs. A pair is two electrons. How many pairs are being shared? Okay, well, this is a shared pair. It's being shared with hydrogen. That is a covalent bond. So I have a covalent bond here. It's a shared pair of electrons. This is a shared pair of electrons, and that's a shared pair of electrons. So when I'm asking you how many shared pairs, I'm really asking you how many covalent bonds do you have, and you have three single covalent bonds. Now, this is kind of key here, all right? How many unshared pairs of electrons? Unshared pairs on your central atom. This pair right here is not being shared. And in fact, it came along with nitrogen having one, two, three, four, five electrons. And that top pair will never be shared. Now, I understand that you can also draw it like this. But once again, I want you to see there's a pair of electrons that will never be shared. And if I'm drawing something like H2O, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six. H has one, covalent bond. H has one, right there, covalent bond. I'm going to have two unshared pairs of electrons. So when we look at the central atom, I really want to key in on how many pairs of unshared unshared pairs of electrons do I have. That's going to be very important for us. Some of the shapes we're going to be looking at are going to have uh, kind of shapes like this. A little, they look a little more like back massagers than molecular shapes, but these are actually what the molecules would look like. Okay, So when I refer to a central atom, I'm referring to the middle um the middle of my shapes. Now, these guys all have some funky shapes. I definitely think you can see that. All right, This one over here, we got four uh, legs coming off of it. This one has three legs, and this one has uh, two legs. But I want you to look above the pictures. Okay, Let's look above the one in the middle here. Let's go straight up. What I want you to see is that there's actually, if I was to draw a Lewis dot structure for NH3, I would have an unshared pair of electrons. And what I'm telling you is that you actually are going to have an unshared pair of electrons that are not shown in the pictures. They're not there. Okay? This is H2O. And on the last picture, last slide, I kind of showed you H2O had these two unshared pair of electrons. Now, CH4 has no unshared pair of electrons. It has hydrogen up top, has hydrogen over on the side, on the bottom, and over to the left, too. And I'm going to represent this two-dimensional drawing with this kind of three-dimensional picture. My shared pair of electrons are represented by this bar here. This little leg is actually a shared pair of electrons. And you can see that for all these. There's my shared pair of electrons. And that's not really too unfamiliar because we do represent shared pair of electrons using a line sometimes. And over here I have electrons. And what the VSEPR theory says is that these electrons... These electrons are here, these electrons are here, all repel each other. When I say repel, I mean push apart. So that means these electrons are pushing apart from these electrons. 
these electrons are pushing apart from these electrons, and there's a maximum distance apart that they can go. These over here on top are pushing these guys down, and they're also pushing backwards, and the same with these over here. And that is the whole gist between the valence shell electron peripulsion theory, is that all my valence shell electrons, the ones in here that are bonded, and also the ones that are not bonded, push each other away. And when you push each other away, you end up with predictable, predictable molecular shapes. The first shape we're going to look at is linear. Linear is nothing more than two elements. Anytime I have two elements, whether it be H2, Br2, excuse me, O2, anytime I have two elements, the only possible shape it can be is linear. Let's check it out. Here's bromine. And here's another bromine. They both have seven electrons in their outer shell. What shape can it be? Well, in this case, the only shape it can be is linear. Anytime you have two elements, there is no central or middle element, I'm going to have a linear shape. Okay, this is called linear as well, but this is linear with three atoms. Now, there is a central atom in this case, but I want you to key in on the central atom. Are there any unshared pair of electrons? And the answer is no. I have double bonds. Double bonds mean all my electrons are located over here and over here. And I want to draw something here. Electrons have a negative charge. I'm going to draw a negative charge right there and a negative charge right there. And bear in mind, negative charges repel each other. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show that they repel each other as far away from possible, and that is going to be 180 degrees away. So anytime I have three atoms in a row, and I have double bonds going in each direction, and there's also no unshared pair of electrons on the central atom, they're going to separate 180 degrees apart into a linear shape. Now, once again, the unshared pairs have to be on the central atom. The unshared pairs over here do not count for right now, but they do spread apart away from that double bond as well. When we're looking at H2O, the question is, which is the correct version of H2O do I have? Okay? Uh, the key for us is looking at H2O is that on my central atom, I have two unshared pair of electrons, and I have two shared or two covalent bonds going on here. And the question is, which one is correct? Well, let's look at the picture here. You have two options, linear or bent. And I'm going to tell you, you end up with a bent structure. Now, we could have had this structure going on here, like we saw before, linear with three elements. Okay, H2O has three elements in it. You have two H's and an O. So altogether, I have three atoms. And anytime you have three atoms, your choices are going to be linear with three or bent. The key to understanding why it's bent lies in this. Okay? These electrons will cause those electrons, the ones in the bond, to be pushed downward. And as you recall, CO2 had no unshared pair of electrons, and therefore it was allowed to separate 180 degrees. On my central atom, I have two unshared pair of electrons. Each electron carries a negative charge, and they are repelling not only the electron pair over there away, but also the electrons downward. And bear in mind, these are also electrons here. We represent them as lines. They are pushing each other away, too, and they end up with a bent structure. This is NOF. And it's the, another example of a bent structure here. And once again, I have three atoms here. Anytime I have three atoms, I'll draw it one more time. My options are going to be linear with three elements or bent. And the only way I can have linear is if there are no unshared pair of electrons on there. Anytime I have an unshared pair of electrons, it's going to repel the other electrons downward. And that is what I have here. NOF has a unshared pair of electrons, and that's going to cause that set of electrons downward, and that's going to cause that set to go downward too. And likewise, these guys repel each other as well, and they push apart. And that, once again, comes back to the valence shell electron, my outer shell electrons. The pairs repel each other. Valence shell electron, peripulsion theory. Trigonal pyramidal is uh, another shape for us. Anytime I have one two, three, four total atoms, you're going to have two options. You're going to have something known as trigonal pyramidal, which is a flattened version of this, like flattened. It doesn't raise up in the air. Or you're going to have trigonal pyramidal, which is seen right here. This is NH3. 
NH3 actually has an extra pair of electrons on top there because nitrogen has five electrons. And anytime nitrogen is going to bond with something, it's going to form three bonds and going to have one unshared pair of electrons. That one unshared pair of electrons is going to repel the structure downward into this pyramid style shape. Trigonal planar is the exact same thing as trigonal pyramidal, and I'll just backtrack to this. The only thing trigonal planar doesn't have is that. And when I remove the electrons from the top of this right here, the whole structure ends up being flat, ends up being flattened out, and I end up with a trigonal planar structure. And you're really only going to see this when I have boron, which has one, two, three outer shell electrons, bond with another element, such as BF3. Anytime boron bonds to something, the key is that on my central atom, I don't have any extra unshared electrons. They're all going to be bonded up. Therefore, this will give me a trigonal planar structure. Here's another example of a trigonal planar structure. It's uh, an example where I have no unshared pairs of electrons, but I have three areas of negativity. One area of negativity here. This is my electrons here. I have some electrons here, and there's my third area of negativity, and they need to separate as far apart as possible, and when they do so, I end up with a trigonal planar structure. And the last we're going to look at today is going to be the tetrahedral shape. I want you to see this is any time I have one, two, three, four, five atoms in a compound. Okay, You're going to see a lot with carbon in the middle. Anytime carbon's in the middle and you have four spokes coming off of him, you're going to end up with a tetrahedral shape. All the electrons will push each other apart and every single bond in here is exactly 109.5 degrees apart from each other. And that is, once again, due to the electrons repelling each other. An exception to the octet rule is going to be octahedral. And I'm just going to throw this out at you. We're not really going to look at this, but there are other shapes that you can study. But we're going to bypass this one for the time being. Okay, dudes, here we go. This is our uh, last checking for understanding going on here. I have a bunch of these shapes over here. All right, I got all the shapes we looked at before. The only thing you don't see in here is going to be linear with three elements, and that's okay. I can just draw that right at the top here. So if you want to have linear with three, there it is. Okay. I want you to look at the compounds. These are covalent compounds, and within each covalent compound, there are covalent bonds. And I want you to check out my covalent compound, and I want you to match it to a shape. Okay? A good thing for you to do right now would be press the pause button and determine the shape. Okay, carbon tetrafluoride, that's CF4. I have 4 plus 1 carbon is 5 atoms altogether, and there's only one shape that has 5 atoms, and that's this one right here. So CF4 is going to be tetrahedral. Okay, here we have SF2, and I'm just going to start this out. Um, I have S, and S has the Lewis dot structure of this. It's the central atom on the SF2, sulfur difluoride. And there's going to be fluorine coming off this way and a fluorine coming off this way. So really, I have three atoms. My choices are going to be linear with three or bent. And in order to have a bent structure, I need to have unshared pair of electrons. Anytime something is bent, I need to have an unshared pair of electrons. And SF2 has three atoms, and it's going to be bent structure. Why? Because in the central atom, I have two unshared pair of electrons. All right, H2 is pretty easy. H2 is going to be right over here. This linear, there's only one element, there's only one shape, rather, that has two atoms in it, and that's this one. Carbon dioxide has two oxygens and a carbon, giving me three atoms altogether. Anytime I have three atoms, my choices are going to be the linear, right here, with three atoms, or my bent structure as well. And if I check this out, I'm going to draw a Lewis dot structure, and what you end up with from a slide earlier today, I think we had the same slide, is that on my central atom there are no extra electrons. And that's going to give CO2 a linear shape. Okay, this is H2S. And once again, let's go back all the way up to this one right here again. Same thing, the central atom is S. And on S, I have two unshared pair of electrons. So I have one sulfur, two hydrogen, three atoms altogether. And the middle one has unshared pair of electrons. That's going to be bent. The last one we're going to look at today is PF3. The central atom is going to be phosphorus. Phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five total electrons, and I'm going to have one unshared pair, and that's going to match up to this one right here. All right. 
That's going to be trigonal pyramidal. It could not have been this one because this one is not bent in any shape. There's not electrons remaining here. This is a flat structure. So our answer for PF3 is going to be trigonal pyramidal. Okay, guys, that's all for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. I hope it was helpful.